All right, so you've seen the iPhone 13, 13 Pro videos and you're about ready to place that pre-order. But I'm gonna tell you before you do that, you might wanna hold on. I'm gonna go through some things maybe you know about the iPhone 13, 13 Pro and some things you may not know. And as a whole picture, should you upgrade to the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro series of phones or should you maybe even get an older phone, maybe the 11 or 12, which are actually still on sale on Apple's website, if you can believe that, they're still current phones. So we're going to talk about that and some other things, as I always do, right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listening to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name is Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. And today we're going to talk about the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro and whether or not you should buy them. So if you like that, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let's get into the new video. So let's start with the basics. If you already have an iPhone 12 or 12 Pro, or to be honest, 11 or 11 Pro, or 11 Pro Max, these phones look very, very similar as far as features go and as far as the look goes. There's a couple of changes here and there, but by and large, if you have one of the 11 or 11 Pro or 12 and 12 Pro phones, this is not gonna be an exactly exciting phone for you. So you might just wanna hang tight and not buy this one. But for those of you that are in the market for this phone, let's go over some of the things that are the same as the previous generation and some things that are different. Now, of course, the design is pretty much the same as before, but the notch is slightly smaller, ever so slightly. But in a vacuum, if you're not actually looking at it next to another phone, you're probably not going to notice. So if you're looking for a major change on the front, you're not going to get it. You will see it on the back as the back arrangement of the 13 looks a little different than the back arrangement of the 11 and 12. Now, does that make a difference to you? Not so much. There's a reason they did it, and it's because the cameras themselves are better, but the look itself is by and large basically the same. And while there are new colors and new case colors, the one thing you won't be able to do, which I like to be able to do whenever it's possible, is to use your existing case on the new phone. Now, every once in a while this works, but probably not this year. The new iPhone 13 is a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier than last generation. And since the tolerances on cases tend to be very tight, the chances of your cases working is pretty much slim or none. So yes, if you, use a case on your phone, which I do. I mean, the people out here running butt naked without a phone a case is kind of crazy to me. These things are like $1,000 at times. I don't know why you're doing it, you crazy. Uh, you're gonna have to buy a new case. I already ordered one with mine. You don't have to get one of the Apple cases, which are heavily overpriced. You can certainly go to Amazon and find some less expensive and uh, really durable options. The camera bumps might be slightly bigger, but you're not gonna notice that again by itself. If you look compared to maybe an iPhone 12, you might. But these are things that, um, you know, in the spec sheets, they kind of stand out. So I wanted to mention it. But of course, if you're going for the Pro series of phones, you're wanting to about the 120 Hertz screen. Now, let me just be clear. The 120 Hertz re adaptive refresh screen is only on the Pro series of phones. It's not on the regular 13 uh, or 13 mini. Just be aware of that. Some people might think going into this, they can uh, cheap out, get one of the less expensive ones and get 120 Hertz. Not this year, perhaps next year. Now, one thing we're not getting that we were hoping to get is the always on display. And what we thought was gonna happen is they would use the same technology as using the Apple Watch, where it does an adaptive refresh rate down to one Hertz, but that is not actually the case. Apparently the screen only goes down to 10 Hertz, which is probably too much for an always on display, or, or maybe it isn't too much, but for whatever reason, there is no always on display. So you can forget about that. The A15 processor is in all of these phones. And yes, that's exciting. You get the newest, latest and greatest, fastest mobile processor there is probably in the world. Uh, but you're not gonna see a lot of difference again on the day to day. But when you're talking about the A15, you're not necessarily talking about speed. Of course it is faster. However, what you are seeing is some of the features that are enabled on the iPhone 13, making use of that extra power. For example, some of the new camera tricks and some of the uh, machine learning that's able to be done on the phone and locally on the phone are completely due to the A15 processor. Now, some of these things are video encoding and decoding and playing video games, but I don't suspect you'll see a lot of things taking so much advantage of it over an A14 or A13 processor, at least until someone optimizes for it. Now, having said that, you will get longer support. Of course, the A15 processor being the newest one means you'll be getting updates for many, many years. We're still like almost five or six years back on support for iOS 15, which is kind of crazy. 
So you will get a couple extra years if you're willing to spend a little bit more money now. Now, some of the camera improvements can be directly related to the A15 as the amount of processing power that's in that thing is helping make some of the magic we've seen in the presentation uh, actually possible. Having said that, it doesn't mean some of these features won't be backwards compatible with older phones. We see this all the time. And I've been mentioning this in my latest couple of videos, that some of these software features you see, especially things like Smart HDR, could make their way back on some of the older phones in upcoming updates. The screens are now gonna have a higher brightness and of course, a bigger battery. We're gonna see battery life improvements across all of the phones, which is excellent. Minimum an hour and a half and upwards of two, maybe more hours on the Pro series of phones. This is exciting because to me, one of the most important aspects of a phone is battery life. I don't think anyone can argue that. Camera phones and pictures and video aside, like all that stuff works great on pretty much any phone you can buy right now. It's all about battery life because if your phone is dead, none of those features matter. Finally, storage is minimum 128 gigs. Thank goodness for that. I think there are a couple of years behind on this, but we're there. That is one thing that actually is worth buying and one of the newer iPhones for is that your base level storage is now 128 rather than 64, which I think the way people are using phones for pictures and video, I mean, that should be the minimum anyway. So if you are a heavy picture or video taker, the iPhone 13 base model is finally gonna fit uh, probably your day-to-day -day needs. Some of the other new camera improvements include the newer wide angle lens that lets in 47% more light. Now, some of the camera's improvements are hardware related, which means you will definitely get better pictures, especially in low light with the newer iPhone 13 over some of the older phones. That really can't be fixed so much in software. I mean, you will get some night mode improvements, I'm sure on the older phones as well, but when you're letting in more light, the lower light pictures are gonna be good for you. And that includes things that are outside at night or even inside in mixed lighting situations, which might be more common in your picture taking, taking than, than uh, being outside. So whatever type of environment you're typically in, if there's challenging lighting situations, the iPhone 13 series might actually be something you wanna look into. Last year, the iPhone 12 Pro Max was the only phone that got the OIS to stabilize the, um, the camera sensor. Now. All of them, all iPhone 13s are getting that this year, which is a great improvement across the board. I'm actually surprised they didn't just keep it in the Pro Series. They gave it to even the baseline. So that'll help with uh, some, some shakes when you're taking pictures or video and also in low light situations where you need to keep your phone completely steady in order to get a good shot at night. If you like to take macro pictures, pictures close up, iPhone 13 has you covered. It has a macro lens that's going to work for those really close up images. Now. A lot of people won't use that, but there are a certain type of photographers that love the close-up, and this will absolutely dominate the previous iPhones that are out there because they just don't have the lens for it. So if you're looking to take some close-up pictures of things like really close in, well, iPhone 13 is for you. Of course, one of the coolest features they showed was cinematic video, um, but it is capped at 1080p, 30 frames a second. We did not know that when they were showing it, but to be honest, like, it still looks amazing. I'm actually really impressed by this feature. This is where you can focus on different elements uh, inside of your video. You can even do it after the fact, which is entirely incredible. Um, if that's something you might wanna play around with, especially if you're an aspiring filmmaker, you're gonna be super happy with the iPhone 13 series of phones. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be backwards compatible with previous generation phones. I'm unsure if any of that has anything to do with lenses. My guess is it really doesn't but we'll see in future updates as uh, Apple starts to bring out iOS 15 and we start to see some features hit those older phones. Before we get into the pricing and the options there, there's a lot of iPhones available now, all the way from the iPhone SE, the iPhone 11, 12, and then into the 13 series. So why would you buy an 11 or 12 series of phones when the 13s are out? Money. I mean, let's be honest, they're really stupid cheap. And the iPhone 11 is an incredibly solid phone. I'm actually gonna promote that as an incredibly solid phone over top of the other phones. The iPhone 12 is nice with the uh, OLED display, so that's one kind of upgrade you'll get there. But by and large, the best option for you is whatever fits your wallet. It doesn't matter what anyone says, doesn't matter what I say, I'm just telling you what the features are and what kind of things you can expect from them. The iPhone 13 series of phones are definitely definitely positioned as an incredible video production device and almost a professional level video camera. If you don't need that and you just need a really solid phone, you wanna save some money, the 11 and 12 are darn good phones. Having said that, Apple is being very, very generous with some trade-ins. If you go to their site, you'll see that some carriers are also offering some uh, incredible uh, pre-order specials. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description. Just go to apple.com and you can see that there are some up to $1,000 off options. 
if you really want to get one of the 13 series of phones, and this might be the best time to get them. There will, of course, always be additional options, deals coming up or coming up in the holiday season that will allow you to get this phone for even cheaper. I suspect that you should never have to pay completely full price, especially if you have a phone to trade and it doesn't matter how old it is, typically you can get something for it. So as I've said, there's been some things you've needed to know. You can't use the same cases anymore. The cinematic video is not in 4K and other various little tidbits here and there. The pricing of the mini says it's $7.99, but that's not really true. If you wanna to try to get it unlocked and not activated on a phone carrier, which I can't figure out why you would, it's actually then more expensive. That's a hell of a run on sentence right there. But anyway, you now know if you should buy the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you're gonna do and watch one of these other videos. I got some really great videos here. What, why aren't you watching them right now? I'll see you next time. Peace and love.